Hey, everybody. Um, my name's Mike. I'm the founder of Ada. Uh, we help quickly growing companies automate their customer support. And I have a question for everyone in the room today who's either building a software product or thinking about building one. Put your hand up if you are, by the way. Who's building software or interested in building software? OK, just about everybody. So my question for you is, how do you know uh, that your software is valuable? That's supposed to be an emoji of something. <laughs> <laughs> so one, one way you might know that it's valuable, or you might think it's valuable, is because you have a user. Or maybe, I'm just going to keep going, maybe you have multiple users, and you're excited about that, and you think that that is a great proxy for value. Or, or better yet, maybe you have lots of users who are telling you that your product is awesome. And it's because they're telling you your product is awesome that you know your software is valuable. Or better yet, you know what, maybe you have so many people who are using your product, who are telling you that it's awesome, and they're paying you. You have revenue. And then you know, the answer to the question is, I know I'm delivering value. Well, what I want to talk to you guys about today is I actually think that all three of those measurements, all three of those proxies, are actually very dangerous proxies for value creation in the early days of any software development. And actually, later on as well, when, when you're actually looking to improve that product. It's OK. I'll, I'll work with this shit. So the answer to the question, in my opinion today, what I want to convince you is that your software actually isn't valuable. And that's, that's, the, that's the paradigm I, I really think is, is useful. It's been useful for us as a company. It's a paradigm that I think will be useful for you as you look to make your software better. And if you channel that paradigm, you look at value creation through that paradigm, what you'll, what you'll find is that, and if you'll believe that software isn't inherently valuable. And instead, what you'll believe is that software is a multiplier of value that is created in the physical world. That, that is, that's our definition at Ada uh, of what software really is. And that's what we think is really important for you to understand when you're trying to build a, a really kick-ass product. And if you take that paradigm and you apply it, there's three learnings that I want you guys to walk away with from today. The first is that you'll do things that are manually. When you look to create value through software, before you write a line of code, you'll do things incredibly manually until it's painful. Actually, really, really very, very, very painful. Um, with Ada, uh, we actually answered thousands of customer support tickets a month manually before we wrote one line of code. And that was very, very, very painful. And because of that, what we found was that software, when we went to write it, actually became medicine. And that's also a very useful way to think about software creation, in, in our opinion. You'll know what software to write. You'll know what software to build because you are feeling the pain so intensely. You'll understand the, the value that your software is creating, and it'll be so obvious what you should build. And the final takeaway is that you'll realize that as you've solved that, you've created that medicine, and you've solved that problem, you'll realize that um, moving forward, you need to embrace that analog past. You need to reckon, you'll recognize that um, the way you relate to your customers is by sharing stories of that physical pain that you experience. The way that you sell to prospects is by communicating stories around how your software takes away that pain that you yourself experience. That is your competitive differentiator as a company, uh, and that is what will help you grow your business or lead to a successful product launch. So these are the kind of things that we think about today when we've gone from answering thousands of customer support tickets manually to now automating hundreds of thousands a day. And it's the kind of thing that we think about all the time at Ada. Um, Nick, Nikita, and Dan are also here from our team. We'd love to talk to anyone about this. Love to help you guys think about uh, building your business. So feel free to send, send me an email at micadata.support. Uh, we'd, we'd love to help. Thanks. Questions? No? Yes, maybe? Hi, Mike. Mike, right here. Thank you. That's a very uh, innovative pitch that we just heard. And also, you've been featured as part of the Tech Vibes 
the most upcoming uh, firms in Toronto. So congratulations for that. Um, my question is, does it follow um, the algorithm that you have? And again, you don't have to give me the details. I'm just curious. Does it pick up on words to answer the questions, or how does it understand what I'm trying to ask, which is repetitive? Oh, are you speaking about our, our product, our own yeah. technology? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, short answer is yes, it does. I'm happy to talk to you more about Ada directly uh, at any point. Yeah. Perfect, thanks. Hey, uh, what do you think about open source in that relation? <laughs> if you say your software is not valuable, uh, what do you think about sharing your software? Oh, I see. What do I think about open, the question was, what do I think about open source software? Um, I, I love open source software. I think yeah. I think it's great to share your learning and share your software and, and build upon other people's ideas. What, what I'm trying to communicate to you is really just an idea, but as you look to build new software, it's valuable. I think a lot of people assume that software is inherently valuable. That if I, if I, and they don't recognize that software is a tool. It's one way of solving a problem. So if you really channel that, I think you, if you're interested in building open source software, you'll probably build much better, more useful open source software with that paradigm. Yeah, I mean, I'm already doing that, and what I explain to people is, hey, the content is actually the valuable thing, and mm. the product that you built, uh, everyone can copy it. Like, if you like went down the path and through all this pain and built a process, for example, someone can copy it really fast. So yeah, I, I totally really agree. like that approach. Hmm. Thanks. One last question. Um, my question is about this space of making the, these things more automated. Um, do you agree with the general flow feeling going on around that in 10 years all of these things are going to be automated? Do you think it's going to take longer, shorter? What's your general vibe on that? Um, I think things have been being, have been being automated for hundreds of years and that you know, this, this new AI wave is really, uh, yes, it will be quite disruptive. Uh, and it will, it will usher in a new era of automation. But when viewed from a historical lens, that, that level of automation, I actually don't think will be that distinctly different than previous eras. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys.